Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. I got a couple quick things I'll go over with you this morning on some beginner, very basic stuff. Got a few people messaging me in a panic over some things that uh, are really simple, but I just can't get back to them in time to pacify what they need. And they get mad about it. So we finally downloaded that messenger app, which I absolutely cannot stand. People see you on there and they think you're available at all times and I'm not. So if you are in some kind of uh, dire situation, emergency or something, don't rely on me to get right back to you because sometimes I won't, sometimes I just can't. Or I don't, maybe I don't see your message because there's a lot of them coming through. But uh, the guy that was highly disappointed in me this morning sent me a message last week wanting to know how to transfer bees and I didn't get back to him until today when he said disappointed plus plus <laughs> I'm like, and that's, that's the only thing there wasn't anything in the thread above it so I responded and said you know am I supposed to know what this means and so then he let me have it about not responding to him when he was trying to transfer bees and I'm like We've got hours and hours and hours of transferring bees on my videos, whether it's through cutouts, splits, whatever it is. And so if you go look, you're going to find what you need. But today, I'm going to take a few minutes. I'll show you that real quick. I'll also show you, uh, some people ask, what's the best smoker fuel? That's it right there, pine straw. But sticks, leaves, pine cones, cardboard, paper, cotton, all that stuff works really good. And usually the denser it is, the longer it'll smoke. Harder it is to get to smoke, but the longer it'll smoke. But real quick, what I'm gonna do is split this nuke right here. I haven't opened it. I haven't looked at them as far as going into the box yet. That is the only, yeah, that's the only nuke that I, that I overwintered, and that was by accident. It was just a swarm that moved in into that box late last year, and I didn't do anything to them, for them, about them. I just left them alone. They survive fine. They, they appear to be doing really well. They're bringing in pollen like crazy. And it's about time to be swarming, be thinking about it. So I'm gonna go on and go in there and probably split them today. I'll show you that, show you how to make a quick split. And that's transferring bees, same thing. And another thing on my videos, you might see me wearing my hat backwards. That's not for a cool look. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What that is, is when I'm working bees, especially if I'm doing a cutout, I'm working overhead, so I don't want to be looking under the bill of a hat. But if I'm working hives, bees go up, they get under the bill of your cap, and they're trapped, especially if you're looking down, they're used to going up. They're usually going towards light, so they get up under the bill of your cap, and they start walking along the edge of your hat on your forehead. You try to flick them out, and you get stung. So, easiest way to prevent that, flip it around, up and around your hat, and they're gone out of your face. Yeah. Before we get too far into this, let me encourage you to stick around to the very end of the video where we'll do the two day after inspection on this hive we're going through right now. And we'll also get to see who won the drawing, man. Got another drawing coming up. Don't miss it, get in on the action. Got some pretty great prizes again. This time, Beetle Buster bottom boards and interview inner cover. Stick around. That's where that box sat all winter. I didn't do anything to help them out. But they have really been faring well on their own. Now you get a nuke that's strong like this and just about any time else you would want to. That's a screen bottom, so I'm smoking under the box. Just about any other time you might want to move them up into a 10 frame and let them roll. But we're about to be making queens and making splits. Got just a couple of high beetles there. Keeping corralled up top. Look at there, I didn't even know what was in this box. Three frames and they made it through winter and I did not feed them except for two weeks ago, I put about a half a cup of dry sugar on top of that inner cover that you could tell I hadn't had off. Other than that, 
We've got red maple in bloom. We've got spring tie tie in bloom. And I see some cups in there. So uh, this one is about in the condition I expected. It's got to be something done with it. I might not split them. It's only three frames. I might see if I find some extra queen cells in there, but I might just move them up into a five or six frame situation and they can sure handle the extra space. A lot of you don't even know you can eat honey straight out of your hive. Mm, good stuff. No need for any kind of processing. You can just lick it straight out the comb. When you're pulling these frames, you want to take a look and see which one looks like the skinniest, the skinniest frame or the one looks like it's going to do the least damage to pull it. In this case, it looks like this center, center frame. This frame here is cross-combed all over the wall, so I'd rather pull this one try to slide this one out. Yeah, we got a we got a good queen. All those cells that look empty are are emerged bees, and they've been relayed and have larvae or eggs. I don't think there's an empty cell on this frame. Same on the back side. I ran the bees off with the smoke, but there's not an empty cell there. Every one of them's got something in it. Let me get up closer, see if I can show you. There's an egg or a larva or pollen in every one of those cells that looks empty. And then there's a emerging bee down there on the bottom left. Emerging, don't you hate that, that word? I hate to say emerging. It's either hatching or being born. Everybody wants to get upset when you don't say the right word. So these right here, don't have any queen cells yet and uh, I think we're safe just to transfer them put them in this five framer just for a bit anyway okay. these these actually could go in an eight or ten frame with no problem but we're gonna put them in this five frame and add some of these dirty combs for them to clean up and start laying in and doing whatever they need to and don't forget I didn't turn these cool hats around just to look bad, although, you know. What do you think about the backwards hat? Look gangster? Make your head on backwards. Make it look gangster. <laughs> you look like you got your head on backwards. <laughs> now this right here is a real nice drawn frame, but it's got mildew on it, and it's got some old wax moth trails in it. There ain't nothing live in it but it's dirty. Not the ideal thing, but we, when you put it in a, a healthy hive, they'll clean that up. You know, it takes them a little while to clean it, but they'll get it done. If you if you were splitting this down to a, a weak hive, if you're doing one of those two frame splits, I would not recommend using something like that. Next frame I'm gonna pull is the, uh, the slightly less drawn out or less built out frame with my drone brood on it. I don't think we're gonna have any problems populating this box, what do you think? <laughs> there again, back of that frame, anything that's not capped has all got bee bread, larva, eggs, everything looks real nice. Looks better in the box. Yeah, it's all in better shape than the box. Well, they're not quite as far along towards swarming as I thought they would be. I thought they'd be uh, 
queen cells all in this thing when I pulled it up, pulled it out. Now my queen's still in this box. She's probably gonna be up in all this mishmash of cross comb hiding somewhere. This is all the freshest, newest comb she's laying on. They are starting to draw a few cups in here, but no queen cells yet. Just gotta take a second to find her. She, and of course we still got all that comb on the side of the box in there she's probably hiding in. There she is right there. I did a terrible job of showing y'all that, but I just basically just laid her on the frame on that brood and let her, let her walk in. Now we gotta clean up all this burr comb before we put this thing together where the frames won't fit. <laughs> She's been picking out paint colors. So. There's our hive color. What she did was she took a handful of bees in the Home Depot and stuck them on the sample machine to get a color of the pollen. <laughs> Alright, they're all transferred over. Simple as that. A little clean up, move them over, add two frames. Now, like I say, I did not tend these bees all winter. They did go through winter on three frames. This is a four frame box. A buddy of mine built a few of them for me. And uh, termites got in some of them. So there was a lid shielding them from the weather. But you can see right there on the back of the box, they had plenty of ventilation all winter long. Did not bother them a bit. Now, we do have some pretty mild winters. But I'll run this box until it's just absolutely falling apart. Now, I don't call that falling apart. That little inner cover ain't in the best of shape. But man, it's got that smell. It's got that smell. Same with the rest of the box. Box is in pretty good shape. Not bad at all. Got one little tear in the screen on the bottom of it. But this box right here, that's what I like. Is, tired of losing my Is your hive tool, tool sticky with honey? <laughs> How are you doing that, mister? If you lay your, may, your hive tool down every time you're not needing it, you spend half the, half the day looking for your tools. So you just stick them on there. If you don't mind your blue See, jeans getting dirty. It might hold two. See if it'll hold. Mm, it'll hold two. <laughs> <laughs> it's dollar and fifty cents worth of magnets. Glue them together with Gorilla Glue. Drop them in your pocket and when you're working. Don't worry about laying your hive tool down. Just lay it in your pocket and let her go. <laughs> I'll show you them later. Not on today's video, though. Well, I'm going to have to put y'all down now so I can get back to work. But I'm going to show you the giveaway. All right, here we go with the winter selections. We got 52 entries. Got some good shots here all over the world. Man, from... Uh, Mark Crowder, Mark's over in Italy somewhere. 
uh, he's got one of the older hats and so does Wesley Fetters and so does Blizzard Vic, although he's wearing our new hat here. These guys have the older ones and uh, there's a few more floating around out there, but those, uh, I appreciate those posts, I like seeing those. Had a few guys send some good intros too that, with the gear on. Stephen Bain sent one, Blizzard Vic sent one, a couple other guys, appreciate those a whole lot. Now let's pick our winner. Pick from the 52 entries, bam. <laughs> All right, Mark, congratulations. All right, Mark Kreider is our round one winner. We're still gonna have another drawing beginning of March. Now you'll recall I added two old dirty frames in here. Covered with mildew. It's been almost exactly 48 hours. We're just gonna pull those two frames real quick and see what kind of shape they're in right now after 48 hours being worked in this in this little box with plenty of bees in it. Look at that. This frame here is half full of nectar already. 48 hours, they've already cleaned the entire frame. And this whole, well, I can't say this whole side. From here over, I don't know if you can see the sparkle, but that whole two thirds of this side is being packed with nectar. All these cells have been polished now, and that's something I'd be, that'd be hard to show you on video, but all these cells have been polished and they're ready for the queen to come lay in this side here same way and it's all polished all these cells are polished and I wouldn't be shocked if I found the queen on here doing what she does best I don't see any oh yeah I do I see eggs right here yep two days Old nasty frame, two days they've cleaned it up and the queen has already deposited eggs. Let's check this other one too real quick. It's about the same, I see. They've got all these cells cleaned and polished. Same on this side. And I'm telling you, these were some nasty frames. This kind of, it's still a little bit dirty down here in the corner. You can see kind of how brown and crusty looking it is. But the whole rest of this frame, they have done some nice work on it. I'd put these bees on anybody's job. <laughs> these are some workers. I'm gonna close out with a real quick afterthought about why you have to do inspections. Of all the people that I've mentored in beekeeping, the vast majority of them were nervous about doing inspections. They didn't want to do inspections. So they send me text pictures of the front of the box and want to know what I think. I think it's a freaking box. You got to open it and look at the bees. There's no way for you to tell. Even with me knowing this, this box, I know the history of the box. I know how long it's been there. I know how long the bees have been there. I know how they got there. I know the season. I know what I should be expecting from them right now. And even knowing all that, I still got it wrong. I expected to split them. You saw what happened. So, you know, new beekeepers don't inspect too often or you mess them up. But you gotta do your inspections to know what's going on in those boxes. Don't be scared of it. If you if you kill a queen, they'll make another one or you can buy another one. And, uh, you know, don't be scared of getting stung. It's a temporary little minor thing. It's not that bad. Y'all have fun, jump in, you'll love it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.